The new year is upon us. It's not quite here yet, but it's coming close. And you know what coming close means? That means new year's resolutions. You gotta get your lifestyle in order for 2022. You're gonna go to the gym. Literally what other new year's resolutions do people make? I don't even know. I haven't done them in years. You know, people make them and you know what happens, you don't do them. Get a couple weeks into the new year and you're like, forget that, you know? Gym membership, it'll just drain my bank account. I, yeah. I don't know. I stopped making New Year's resolutions a long time ago. A long time ago, I was only like 10 years old. So I guess you can say I never really made them in the first place. My main point is a lot of people make New Year's resolutions and then don't end up keeping them. If you feel alone in abandoning your commitment to go to the gym, you're not. It happens to so many people. I don't have exact statistics, but I've heard other people quote statistics and be like, oh, it's like 80% which is insane, but also, are you talking to everybody? I feel like I don't really like statistics like that. That's a tangent. But anyways, Jonathan Alpert, author of Be Fearless, Change Your Life in 28 Days in an article with Business Insider, listed three reasons why people don't complete their New Year's resolutions. Your resolutions aren't specific, you aren't framing them positively, and your resolutions just aren't about you. If you want more details on what he's talking about, you can just read the article. I'm not gonna rehash it here because I'm not here to tell you why you fail i'm here to tell you how to succeed oh yeah that's embarrassing <laughs> of course the link to that article is going to be down in the comments below not comments in the description from ben from business insider so go take Take a look at that. <laughs> Moral of the story, there's a lot of reasons why people fail at doing their New Year's resolutions. But if you have that framework, it's a good launching point to understand like, oh, this is why I'm not completing them. Here's what I can do to complete them better in the future. And that's what I'm here to tell you today, how to complete them better in the future. And of course, this is just my opinion. I'm literally like 20 years old. Go listen to other people too, cause that's what I did before doing this. Listen to other people. <laughs> From what I've gleaned, in the brief research that I've done on New Year's resolutions. There's three elements to truly succeeding at accomplishing your New Year's resolutions. And there's a lot of advice out there ranging from, you know, have an accountability buddy, you know, start small and stick with it. But I feel like those aren't, you know, super helpful or like even stay motivated. Because at the end of the day, I don't really think that's the core problem. I think you can be motivated as whatever, have an accountability buddy, but if you don't really understand why you're doing them, and if you don't really care, then you can't really complete them to the best of your ability. There's three elements you really need to succeed at doing your New Year's resolutions to the fullest. First, is you have to turn your should into a must. I did not come up with that. I stole it from Tony Robbins. Is it technically stealing? If I'm citing him, am I going to get a plagiarism claim on YouTube? I'm still at college, don't, don't judge me, please. <laughs> but yeah, turning your shit into a must is one of my favorite little tidbits of knowledge from Tony Robbins. It really changed my life at least. First of all, what does it even mean? You know, the difference between should and must. Basically a should is something that you should do. You should work out more. You should drink more water. You should clean your apartment before you go to bed. But if it's just a should, then what's really telling you that you like have to do it? When you turn the lifestyle that you want to live into a must, anything that's below that standard, like you don't really accept. So it's like, you must drink eight glasses of water a day, so you do. You must clean your apartment before you go to bed, so you arrange your life around getting that done. I wrote in my notes that the only reason your life isn't at the point that you want it to be is because you aren't turning your shits into must. I think that's an oversimplification that's directed at Aya last night when I was writing this script. There's a lot of reasons why you don't live the life you want to live or make the improvements that you want to do. But if you really get it into your mind space and condition yourself to turn the habits that you want to have and the conditions that you want to experience into must, then you'll accomplish them. Then you just won't accept anything below that level. When it comes to the wording, the core of it is that really should is an optional phrase. Like you should do it, that's an option. You must do it. There's no longer an option with that. You just have to do it. So when you turn your new year's resolution into a must, then it's no longer optional. You just, you must complete that. But 
you know, that definitely, that does, that doesn't solve the entire problem. Cause if your resolution is to go to the gym every day and you're like, I must go to the gym every day, but then life circumstances restrict you from going to the gym every day, then what does turning that shit into a must do? In my opinion, that just makes you feel kind of crappy cause you didn't complete it. <laughs> but that just takes me into my next point, learning your why. Why are you doing the new year's resolution that you're doing? I mentioned going to the gym like 30 million times. Maybe that's because I feel like I need to go to the gym, but your why is why you picked that new year's resolution in the first place. If it is going to the gym, back on again. If it is, why do you pick that? Is it because you want to look better? Is it because you want to feel healthier? If so, maybe going to the gym may not necessarily be the right thing for you. If it's because you want to incorporate more movement into your life and live a healthier lifestyle, then why is the gym necessarily the answer? Why isn't it working out from home? Why isn't it joining a recreational sports team? Why isn't it taking walks? You know, you could do any of those things. Maybe the gym doesn't necessarily fit into your lifestyle. When you're trying to fit having a gym membership and going a certain times during a week and it just like doesn't fit, then you're gonna feel like you failed at your new year's resolution when in reality, you just picked an unattainable resolution. There's nothing wrong with that. Like if you don't have the lifestyle that allows for a certain resolution, that's okay. Pick something else that will actually help you and benefit you. And lastly of the three elements to succeeding is take your time with it. I heard this on the Uneffit podcast. I don't remember the name of who does it, but I can I can put it down below because I've been listening to it a lot and it's really helpful. Tangent, that's what I do all the time. Like just listen to so many self-help things like YouTube videos, podcasts. I'm going into books, but I don't have a lot of time to read books. So maybe I should read audiobooks. You can't read audiobooks because they're audible. Gotta plug audible. Come on, get that, bring that sponsorship money my way. Yeah, yeah, that's, I like the sound of that. Someday, we'll get it there someday. We often overestimate how much we can do in a day. You know, we wake up in the morning and we're like, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, and then this before I go to bed. But then by the time the day actually gets going, you know, we're incorporating different things like need some rest time, need to eat some food, maybe need to prepare your food, go out and get your food. And we're doing so many different things during the day and then we don't have a lot of time to get as much things that we want to get done done which is completely fine but if we you know approach the day like oh i'm gonna do all of this then you get to the end of the day and you're like oh i did not do all of this then you might be feeling a little bit bad that's why you need to change your mindset and really approach it from i'm gonna take time with the things that i do you can do so much more in a month or in a year than you can do in just in a day. And if you do little things during the day, then you're going to see that progress improve and your lifestyle start to change over a long period of time. So you have to be patient with yourself, you know, take your time, really ease into the things that you wanna do, you know, feel it out, suss out the vibes. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. My next point, this is how you actually do your new year's resolutions, the five point plan five point resolution plan. Yes, and I came up with this one. Getting on my coaching stitch, stitch. What's, what's that word? I don't know. You've got to pick five aspects of living a healthier life that are individual to you. And then frame your resolutions around those aspects. And if you realize it works for you, then you can use it throughout the year. You can use it going into next year. You can follow this five point plan do you completely transformed your life and then you're Superman or maybe you're Spider-Man, maybe you're tangent. Andrew Garfield, man, he is 38 years old. RIP. <laughs> when you're picking your five points, think about five aspects of your life that you really want to improve that aren't where you want them to be right now that could get better. For example, mine are meaningful relationships, emotional control, conscientious diet, supportive movement, and pursuit of advancement, which is a very smart way of saying, I wanna get smart and learn big things. I had to make it sound smart, so 
I didn't just write. I want to learn things. Once you have that point, narrow down to some actions you can do to actually achieve that. So let's say on this gym stick again, that your point is supportive movement. How can you achieve supportive movement? Is movement that feels good for you going to the gym and doing a set a couple of times a week? Or is it taking walks outside? Or is it running, training for a marathon? Or is it doing Pilates in your house or yoga or literally anything under the sun? Find something that feels good for you. As long as you're picking something that contributes to your overall goal, then you're building habits that you can start to stack and like that will show up later on down the line as lifestyle changes. If you're wondering why not just pick an entire point to improve on over the year, cause that's, that's a little bit, it's a little bit much. I know you may think you can do it and I'm sure I believe in you. If you were committed, I'm sure you can. You know, for some people that's just a lot to tap onto. If your goal is to completely transform the way you move and operate in this world and exercise, that might be a lot to do in one year. To put it simply, improving one entire aspect of your life is a lot to fit into one resolution. So start small, start with a small lifestyle change and then that will result in bigger lifestyle change. By picking one specific focus and action, you can develop that action into a habit. And once you turn that action into a habit, you can turn another action into a habit. And once you keep turning actions into habits, you stack those habits, then you have a plan. You have positive lifestyle change that you'll start to notice over time. That's not gonna happen in a couple weeks. Like I said, take your time. It's gonna happen after a couple months or so. But you got it, you can do this. Once you really incorporate, like get into the groove of it, then it's gonna get easier and easier to start incorporating different healthier things into your life. And I've said over and over again, once you have those habits and start to stack them, then your life is going to improve. But if you want to learn more about that, cause Lord knows I do not know the most about habit changing and lifestyle shifting. Like I've only just started on my journey. Go read other people who you can read right now Atomic Habits, I haven't read it yet, but literally in all the videos and everything I read or like listened to about lifestyle change for the new year, everybody referenced Atomic Habits. If you're like me and don't feel like shelling out cash on things, although that's kind of a lie because I love my bookshelf, the audiobook is on YouTube for free. It's someone reading it, which is very convenient. Literally, that's the case for a lot of self-help books that I found. The audiobooks, especially the big ones, the audiobooks are just like free on YouTube if you can find them. For a while, I listened to The Art of Seduction while I was sleeping and I, I made a TikTok actually. I said it in a meeting and one of the people I worked with, he was like, I, uh, I don't think we need to know that. And I'm like, yep, probably not, but I'm weird. That's what I do. You just keep learning unnecessary things about me. That's how my life goes. That's another tangent. But yes, go read that book if you want to really incorporate more lifestyle changes into your life and really get to know more about building and stacking habits that will in turn lead to positive lifestyle change. Or you could wait until I read it and then come back on here and make a video about it. But that might take a very long time. Who knows? It depends on what direction this channel goes in which is going to be a positive direction, you know? Manifesting the success, think and grow rich. I'm just dropping like all of the good titles for y'all right now. Like you just gotta go and like look them up. And I'm like, I'm changing your life just with talking to you. Forget Kanye changing the world. It's gonna be me. Did I just quote an NSYNC line in my video? I'm so embarrassed for myself right now. I still don't have a tiger outro, please. Somebody help me. I was thinking of doing like, goodbye tiger cubs, but I love baseball and I hate the cubs. Why do I talk so much on here? Maybe I should talk to more people in real life, but actually no, because I genuinely enjoy talking to myself more than I enjoy talking to other people. Anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in and subscribers. At the time of filming this, six away from 100 subscribers. Oh my God, I'm so excited. When I started this YouTube channel like a year or two ago, like I never thought I would get to 100 subscribers. So thank you all. Anyways, have a great day, night or afternoon. Great day, afternoon or night, wherever you are. And stay classy.
Goodbye. <laughs> Why do I get so aggro here? Why? Mmm. Jeez.